Let's begin with an example. First, we're going to generate a 2D array of random numbers. Recall that the easiest way to do this is with two nested for loops. Remember that the outer loop defines the number of rows, and the inner loop defines the number of columns. We're going to place a random number generator inside the innermost loop and allow the auto-indexing to automatically create for us a 2D array of numbers. The function we want to use from the file I.O. palette is write to spreadsheet file. Let's turn on our context help and take a look at this function. Our key inputs are first our format specifier. Remember that a spreadsheet file is a text file. That means all of our numbers are going to have to be converted into strings. So we need to specify how much precision to use in that conversion. Next, much like all the other file functions we've seen up to this point, there's a file path, which brings up a dialog box if it's empty. Plus there are two inputs. This VI can be used with either 2D array or 1D array data. Plus we have some switches here. We have a Boolean input, which allows us to decide whether to append a file or create a new file. We have the ability to choose whether or not to transpose the data. That means flip the rows and the columns. Also, we have the ability to choose the delimiter. In this case, let's create a constant. We can choose whether or not it is, if we show the slash codes, the default value, which is a tab, or a comma, which is the second most common value, or we can create a custom delimiter. Often the most convenient choice is the comma. Let's also connect the 2D data to our input and leave all the rest of the choices as default. Let's run this VI now. Of course, because we haven't specified an input path, it's asking us to choose an output location. We can choose the file name. Typically, if comma is used as the delimiter, CSV, which is short for comma separated values, is a typical file extension. If we go ahead and save it as spreadsheet.csv. Next, let's look at this directory. We see we've created a spreadsheet.csv file in the desired directory. Observe first that it has an Excel icon. If we double click this file, it will naturally open in Excel, and we see that we have indeed five columns and 20 rows. So one of the benefits of using comma separated values is that you can directly open it with Excel. If we were instead to use tab separated, we were to save it. We could still open the file. We see because we've saved it as a TXT file, it defaults to be opened in Notepad. We see that it has the appropriate formatting, five columns, 20 rows, and we could then import that file into any other spreadsheet for program which was necessary. Let's now create a simple example to read from a spreadsheet file. The read from spreadsheet file, again in the file I.O. sub palette, has the same typical inputs as most of the other read-write functionality. Again, we specify a format, which we can leave default as percent %.3f, which means three digits of precision. We can specify a path, or it will prompt with a dialog. We can also specify the number of rows. Again, there is a default input, which is minus one, which means read all the rows. We can choose a start of read offset, maximum number of characters per row, whether or not to transpose the data, specify the delimiter, and of course as its output it returns all the data in addition to the first row and a mark after read. In other words, how far it did read if we didn't select it to read everything. And the final output is a boolean EOF, which is short for end of file. This returns whether or not it has reached the end of the file. We can use this function two ways. We can have it read the entire file at once and output the entire data set or we can run it inside a loop, reading a certain number of rows at a time and analyzing them in part. A typical application would be to use the EOF output connected to the stop condition of a while loop. 
so that it would continue to read until the end of the file is reached. For now, let's just create an indicator on our 2D array. We're going to run it in its simplest form. It's going to prompt for a file, choose our tab separated.txt, and we'll see if we expand this array and show its vertical scroll bar that we indeed have five columns and 20 rows. Let's try now to open the first file, the CSV file. Remember that the default delimiter setting is to be a tab. If we open a CSV, it does not read it properly. It's a very important point that if you're going to format spreadsheet data or any other numeric data into text, we must always read data of the right format, otherwise we'll get incorrect results.